Welcome to Nature is Amazing. Today on Nature is Amazing, we will be featuring scary plants. Have you ever seen a plant that looks like a cobra? Or a bouquet of flowers that look like a brain? How about a stalk of plants that look like eyeballs? Please stay tuned. We will be featuring some very cool, scary looking plants. The brain cactus is a very interesting plant indeed. This plant is a cactus that looks like a brain. It is a green colored cactus from central Mexico from dry, arid places. It does not rain most of the year there. What gives it its signature brainy look is a mutation or damage to its cells while it is growing in its youth. When the cells in the center of the plant are injured in its young life, the cells multiply so quickly that it causes the stems to curve into these strange spiral formations instead of growing upright. The brain cactus only grows to six inches in height. You can keep the brain cactus at home, but must plant it in succulent soil or potting mix. You must wear gardening gloves when you replant this cactus because it has spines all over that will prick your fingers. Do not overwater this plant. You need to wait until the soil completely dries until you water it again. Keep your plant in a partially sunny place, not fully exposed to the sun, so it does not burn. Red tides are toxic blooms of algae in coastal areas. You are more likely to see red tides in the Gulf of Maine, California, and Mexico in America. But red tides can be seen all over the world. If you ever see a red tide, make sure to stay away. Red tides are dangerous for humans and even deadly towards marine animals. And when the algae dies and decays, it depletes the oxygen in the water. The red tide grows through microorganisms such as protozoans and unicellular algae and are all phytoplankton and use energy from light to grow. Red tides only grow in salty water. What adds to the growth of the red tide algae blooms are fertilizer, waste, and animal byproduct in the water. Red tides can also increase when the surface of the water is warm. Rain followed by sunny days in the summer, low salt amounts in the water. These algae blooms can also spread by wind, storms, and ships. White baneberry or the doll's eye plant can be found in North America and Canada. This plant grows white berries with black pupils, which do look like the eyes of a doll. White baneberry can grow 30 inches tall and it blossoms in the late summer to fall. It also has very thick red stems that branch outwards. It also produces white flowers. White baneberry grows in woodlands and gardens which have plenty of shade. When cultivating this plant, it requires much to full shade and plenty of watering. White baneberry can grow up to two feet tall and three feet wide. It sprouts large green leaves where the small white flowers grow from. When the flower fades, that is when the berries grow. Another plus to this plant is that it smells like a rose. White bane berries are very toxic for human consumption, so leave it to the birds. The birds have no side effects when consuming. In the past, Native Americans used the root for colds, coughs, itchy throats, and to gargle. The corpse flower, or Titan arum, has an upright huge stem with petal-like leaves. This plant can grow up to 12 feet tall and can weigh up to 300 pounds. The corpse flower is native to rainforests in Sumatra, Indonesia. Not only is this Titan arum amazing to look at, it also has a smell you won't soon forget. To some, it smells like rotting cheese. To others, it smells like a hamper full of 12-year-old boy socks after basketball practice. It even may smell like rotting fish if you happen to come near this plant.
The smell makes it easy for bees to find a plant for pollination. You will never know when the corpse flower is ready to bloom. It could actually go years without blooming. When the corpse flower blooms for two to three days, you will be in for a sight you've never seen. In Indonesia, this plant grows on hills with lots of exposure to light and warm and rainy seasons throughout the year. The cobra plant is also called California pitcher plant and is native to Northern California and Oregon. It grows in tubular leaves into a shape that looks like a cobra. It even has two leaves protruding from the tip that looks like a serpent's tongue. The cobra plant grows in mountains that have cold water and in rocky bedrocks of soil. This plant can grow up to 20 inches in height and when full sun is received can turn red. The cobra plant is a carnivorous plant that eats animals or insects. The cobra plant is able to withstand actual fire by regenerating its organs from its roots. The coxcomb is named after the coxcomb on a rooster's head, which is red. This plant often grows in red, but also in yellow, pink, white, and orange. Some of these flowers grow a few inches and others grow a few feet. This plant looks like a bouquet of flowers to some and to others, it looks like a brain. This plant is friendly towards the sun. The more sun there is, the taller the plant will grow. It can also grow in less sun as well. The soil must be kept moist. Thomas Jefferson infamously said about the planting of this particular seed coxcomb, a flower like the prince's feather. The coxcomb is often used as an indoor plant. It needs eight hours of direct sunlight every day and plenty of water. The wolfsbane or aconitum derives from the Greek word dart or javelin. People roaming through the mountains in the northern parts of North America, Europe, and Asia would dip their javelins or darts in the roots of the wolfsbane plant. This plant has green leaves and vibrant purple flowers, and it looks harmless, but it is actually lethal towards wolves. When consumed by a wolf, it dies. In the roots of this plant, is a high amount of poisonous alkaloids. Wolfsbane thrives in composted soil coming from organic material such as garden leftovers and food. This harmless looking plant lives in partial shade. The roots must remain damp and moist and its leaves need exposure to the sun. The wolfsbane was also used to kill wild mountain goat and bears in Japan. The Chinese also used it for hunting purposes. Also, in Alaska, it was also used to kill whales. Its side effects show fruition after about an hour. The Venus flytrap is native to North and South Carolina. You can even spot them in Florida and New Jersey. They can grow up to five inches in diameter. A Venus flytrap has six stems with two hinged lobes at the tip of its leaf. Each lobe has pointy bristles which look like teeth. When an insect lands on its lobes and walks on it, it snaps shut. The Venus flytrap conserves energy by keeping its trap open most of the time. It only snaps shut when touched multiple times. The Venus flytrap has white flowers with green veins through the petal. The Venus flytrap lives in acidic soil with few nutrients. It lives in desolate forests, many which have experienced forest fires and burnt trees and shrubs. The Venus flytrap is carnivorous and eats insects such as spiders, ants, grasshoppers, and beetles. It actually takes three to five days to digest an insect. The Venus flytrap can go months without eating anything. 
The Venus flytrap can open and close its mouth only a few times before it will die. When it falls to mortality, it grows a new trap from the stems. The Venus flytrap can live 20 years or more. Thank you for watching Nature is Amazing. I hope you enjoyed these scary plants as much as we enjoyed featuring them. If you liked this episode, please comment, like, and subscribe.